LeBron and Steph are almost 40 years old, but today we're turning back the clock and putting them in the same draft class, with the first to win four championships being crowned the better player. Right off the bat, LeBron's going number one to OKC, with Steph heading east to Washington, which works out perfectly since both would immediately have a starting spot. And as you would expect, they would make the most of that opportunity, averaging around 21 points per game as rookies, dominating in their own respective styles. But already, we have our first roadblock, because in the race for the Rookie of the Year trophy, it wouldn't be either of them. And it was actually Wemby who won Rookie of the Year, not LeBron or Steph. With that being said, the only way from here is up, and the both of them would progress into the mid-80s in the offseason. But between the two, it would be Steph with the upper hand going from 21 points per game to 30. Already, he cemented himself as one of the top point guards in the entire league, and between him and LeBron, he's taking home the first piece of hardware, which is kind of wild. I don't know. And Steph's dominance would continue into his first playoff run, easily defeating the Hawks in five games. But in LeBron's case, he would be struggling with the Minnesota Timberwolves, who to put it simply, were just out playing the Thunder. Shea doing the dribble Hezzy, tween, tween, the hook shot. LeBron was wide open. Yeah, it's over. Shortly after, LeBron would be eliminated in six games with Steph still alive. Now he's heading to Charlotte to play his hometown Hornets. But that's kind of where it ends for Steph. He would also get eliminated in six games. But there's a clear difference between him and LeBron's situation. So just like LeBron, he's about to be eliminated in six games, but he made it to the second round. LeBron couldn't even do that. Combine that with the fact that Steph already is averaging 30 and has the most improved trophy, it's clear LeBron's the one who has to catch up. And heading into season three, both players are 91 overalls, but in LeBron's case, he's still behind Shea in terms of rating, making him the sidekick. On the other end, Steph's the highest rated player on Washington, so while LeBron's averaging an elite 24-8-6, Steph's playing damn near the entire game, every game, averaging 32-10, eventually winning the MVP. Season 3, Steph already has an MVP. I mean, sure, dude, when you play 40 minutes. But now for Steph, it's time to get serious, as his first round matchup would be against Giannis, someone who's basically the opposite of his playstyle. It's kind of interesting seeing Steph in the Eastern conference for matchups like this one, as both, as most MVPs usually do, will go off, eventually forcing a Game 7. But before we find out how Steph's series will end, we have to check in on LeBron, who also has a Game 7 of his own. Once again, he's on the brink of being eliminated in the first round. LeBron with the ball, LeBron at the free throw line. Not too sure, bro. I don't know what the offense is right now. He drives to the basket. He does like a step back floater. And they drop the ball? They scored. I don't I don't know. It's not over yet. 45 seconds left. LeBron sending the double team at the top of the key. They pass it over to the shooter. He makes... Okay, bro. It's, it's literally... Unless LeBron pulls off a miracle right now, it's over. Literally. This is literally the final possession of the game. The pass down to Giddy. The pass over to Jalen Williams. Jalen Williams for three. I mean, they're still kind of alive, but... I don't know, dude. 2K did the 2K thing where they foul. This dude misses the second free throw. It's only a four-point game. If they hit a three, they, they're still alive. LeBron's just kind of standing there. Yo, move, move. LeBron, bro, you're wasting the whole clock. bro. That's raps, dude. That's Lily raps. Or I mean, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know anymore. I don't know anymore. That dude missed the two free throws. Utah is like handing them the game right now. OKC just doesn't want to win. They throw it over to Josh Giddy in the corner. Josh Giddy at pull up. That's a decent look, bro. They might come back after all that. Two clutch free throws for the Jazz. First one. We don't even see it go in, bro. Even then, I had to assume that he made it. That's crazy, bro. He misses a second free throw. Go, 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 go. LeBron with the ball. Why did he just do a tween between? Why is he doing that right now? LeBron with the pull up. No way. Oh my God, bro. You really put me through that roller coaster for what? We literally, we just got eliminated in game seven. That's unbelievable, bro. The Thunder put the ball in LeBron's hands instead of Shays for the win. And unfortunately, it didn't work out. LeBron would be heading home just in time to watch Steph blast Giannis with 30 points and 17 assists in his game seven. Not only that, but Steph would blast Trey Young and the Hawks in the second round. Steph's moving on to his first conference finals and he has all the momentum, not just over LeBron, but over the entire league. Or at least he was until he got eliminated in six games by the Bulls, who had a very interesting team to say the least. Bro, they have Chris Paul and Cade as the backcourt with Zach Levine at the three. Anthony, oh, I just didn't realize Anthony Davis is on Chicago too. But that's not the end for our two heroes, as after a long off season of work, both would enter the mid 90s. LeBron's situation is kind of different though. While he's still below Shea, it's only a two overall difference, but you wouldn't be able to tell from his performance on the court. He's the lower overall, but he would wind up being the first option, averaging 27, 11, and 7. 
27. On top of that, he would be the one leading the Thunder to 55 wins. And I think you know where I'm going with this one, because eventually LeBron would be taking home an MVP of his own. But right now they're tied up 1-1. We still haven't seen anyone win a championship. Meanwhile, while Steph would do his thing in the regular season, come playoff time, he would kind of enter a lull, getting eliminated by Joel Embiid and Philly in the first round. But in LeBron's case, it wouldn't be easy. It would take seven games and a 41 point performance in said game seven. But ultimately, he's finally winning a playoff series. LeBron finally won a playoff series. It took him four seasons to do it, but hey, bro, he's catching up to Steph. Maybe, possibly, I don't know. Unfortunately for him, though, he would immediately be eliminated in the following round. But there's still reasons to be optimistic. Because in the following playoffs, LeBron would storm past Dallas with Luka and Sacramento with Fox to make it to his first conference finals. And coincidentally, that's as far as Steph went a few seasons ago. And speaking of Steph, he would be eliminated in the first round again, which means if LeBron can defeat James Harden, who would normally be retired if it wasn't for the challenge, he can make it to his first finals. LeBron's kind of flipped the script, but now he has to go up against James Harden, Jalen Green, Jabari Smith's at 93-2. But despite that insane core, LeBron and Shea are tied at 96 overall, officially making them the best duo in the league. The Rockets have a really good team, but it's just not enough. LeBron's moving on to the finals. They throw it in, Jonathan Isaac with a desperation shot, they miss it, and they're not even going to foul. So LeBron, he's like 10 seconds away from going to the finals, his first finals. And the man standing in his way of a championship would be the man who stole his rookie of the year trophy, Victor Wembanyama. His unique play style is enough to throw off most teams, but at the same time, the Thunder aren't most teams. Because while Wemby will lead Indiana to a game one win, LeBron and Shea would go off on the road to tie the series. And while Wemby would win game three, LeBron and Shea would tie up the series again. And the way this series has gone, you might think Indiana would take game five, but that couldn't be more wrong. It was all LeBron and the Thunder. LeBron's about to win game five. They scored 163 LeBron is now one game away from his first championship out of a potential four, and at first it seemed like Steph would be the one to strike first, but he's watching just like the rest of us, and he would be watching LeBron and Shea dominate one last time, finally closing out Wemby and the Pacers. Ironically, Shea would be the one to raise up the Finals MVP trophy, but it doesn't matter. LeBron strikes first in the race to four championships. Now the pressure's on Steph to do something before it gets out of hand. Yeah, LeBron with the MVP, barely beating out Steph. And shockingly, that would be the last we'd hear from Steph this season, as for a third straight time, he's been first rounded. Meaning LeBron once again has free reign over the league, defeating Utah, Dallas, and New Orleans to face Wemby in the finals for a second straight time. Ideally, I would like to see LeBron and Steph in the finals, but apparently we're getting him and Wemby again. And eventually, we will get a LeBron and Steph matchup. But for now, LeBron's cooking Wemby for a second straight season, taking a commanding 3-1 lead. But as dominant as he is, what's really separating him and Steph are the teams that they were drafted to. Tyrese Halliburton with the ball. They throw it down to Wemby. Chet with the steal. Chet with the steal, and he's going to the line. He makes his first free throw. I think LeBron, assuming something crazy doesn't happen right now, LeBron might be going up 2-0 on Steph. And even then, with a five-point lead, the Thunder are going for the kill. Tyrese with the ball. They throw it down. Chet with the second straight. Oh my god, bro. Tyrese is selling. Bro, they're throwing away the game. I don't know. Like, bro, LeBron didn't even do anything. And again, with a six-point lead, still going for the kill. Bro, they turned it over again. Bro, LeBron's just doing cardio. LeBron just chilling at the free throw line. Shortly after, LeBron would officially capture his second championship and his first finals MVP, putting even more pressure on Steph to get something done. It's kind of confusing how bad it's gone for him since he's playing with Bradley Beal and Porzingis, two players who are in the high 80s and he's a 99 overall. At some point, he and the Wizards have to get something done, but for the 2030 season, they miss the playoffs entirely while his rival LeBron is still cooking. LeBron's the first seed, so he has a clear path to the finals if he wants it. And that's exactly what happened. LeBron would make it to another finals with a chance to three but while the Pistons team he's facing doesn't have many household names, they would prove to be LeBron's toughest opponent yet, taking a 3-2 lead. And right now, they're within one stop of sending LeBron home with his first finals loss. Season on the line, 25 seconds left, they throw it into Shea. Shea with the pass over to LeBron at the top of the key, they're about to set a screen. And by they, I mean Chet. LeBron's just kind of standing there. He's about to take the last shot, last possession of the game, one point lead. I'm kind of running out of stuff to say, they should probably start moving sometime soon. They throw it over to Shea, Shea at the top, bro. No way. No way. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, well, the series is still alive. We're going to game seven. But unfortunately, game seven would be all Detroit, with them eventually raising the trophy and denying LeBron a three-peat. But now things are really starting to ramp up. The 2031 season would be pretty bland for our two heroes, but the one defining event would be Steph's contract expiring and his subsequent move out west to the Lakers. He's saying goodbye to Beal and KP and joining forces with D-Book, forming possibly the best backcourt in the league, but most importantly, it skyrockets the odds of him meeting LeBron in the playoffs. Or at least it would if LeBron didn't get eliminated first round.
as the first seed. Oh my god, bro. We were literally so close to seeing them play each other. Steph now has a clear runway to the finals if he wants it, but now he has to face the team responsible for eliminating LeBron. That is a nasty team right there, bro. Scoot, Anthony Edwards, and Paolo. But out of the three, it would be Ant-Man making his mark the most, completely cooking Steph and D-Book, eliminating them in five games. And now both of our two stars are at a crossroads. Steph got off to a hot start, but cooled down dramatically, while LeBron has seen periods of dominance sandwiched between two slumps. But out of the two, the one with the most pressure is Steph, as he still hasn't won a championship yet and has to catch up to LeBron's too. So after leading LA to a 53-win season, it's a good sign that he's finally winning his second MVP, seven seasons after his first. I just want to see him and LeBron be like competitive. But what really put Steph over LeBron was team record, which is important because in the second round, we finally have our first matchup between the two stars. And this matchup will live up to the hype and then some. LeBron and OKC would steal game one in LA with Steph bouncing back in game two to top the series. Both teams would then head to Oklahoma City for game three, which Oklahoma Oklahoma City would win thanks to a LeBron 30 piece, but then once again, Steph would dominate in game four to type the series at 2 2. We have a 2 2 series. All right, finally, bro. It took a while, but we have some action. And now the series would be heading back to LA, a place that's been home to many Lakers legends with Steph potentially on his way. But in game six, LeBron would throw it all out the window, destroying the Lakers with 44 points, scoring in every way possible to take a 3 2 lead. And LeBron's just going like, bro, LeBron, I don't even know. I don't even. Okay, dude. And he would keep it up in game six to officially close out the series. It was looking really good for Steph for a moment there, but LeBron's once again overshadowing him. And after that, the rest is history. LeBron would once again defeat Houston to make it to the finals and defeat Detroit to finish the job, securing his third championship out of a potential four. LeBron had a triple double in the closeout. He is wiping, bro, he is cooking Steph. And it's not to say Steph's playing poorly. He still is averaging 31 points and 10 assists for his career. And if it weren't for LeBron, he would have more than two MVPs. Bro, he's up to six? When when did this happen? But fortunately for Steph, there's some light at the end of the tunnel, because once again, he would face LeBron in the playoffs, and this time, he would have the upper hand. It's unclear what exactly changed between last series and this one, but it doesn't matter, because eventually, he would take a 3-1 lead. And while there might be an alternate universe out there where that's kind of scary, in game five, he has an eight-point lead with two minutes left. The series is basically over. Pass it over to D-Book. D-Book with the handoff to Steph. Steph with the crossover, splits the defense. Step back, jumper, it's good. And at this point, I was very confident in Steph to get this one done. Unless we witness a mirror it looks like Steph's about to eliminate LeBron for all the championships LeBron has. I don't know. I'm not going to jinx anything or I don't want to jinx. Oh my God, I might have jinxed it. Oh my God, I might have jinxed it. I might have jinxed it, but also it's Steph at the line. He missed. Oh my God. LeBron's still alive, bro. Oh my God, he missed. Bro, oh my God. He gets the rebound blocked by James. What is happening? The pass over to Shea. No way. Stop it. Not like this. He drains it. Oh my God. What just happened? What just happened? He missed both free throws. Steph with the ball. Do not pass it to anyone else. Do not pass it to anyone else. Do not pass it. Don't pass it. Don't pass it. Don't pass it. Don't pass it. Pass it back to Steph. Pass it back to Steph. Pass it back to Steph. No way, McDaniels. McDaniels for the win. McDaniels for the win. He misses it. Time out, time out. We don't have a timeout. Bro, to be honest with you, I kind of pulled the J.R. Smith. I thought the game was tied. I literally thought the game was tied, bro. I don't, what the hell? All right, final shot. They throw it into D-Book, he's out of bounds. And with a couple free throws, OKC would seal it. Shea might have had his Ray Allen moment because now the series is tied 3-2 heading to OKC. And after a 37 point and 12 assist performance from LeBron, miraculously, when you thought he was out, he's forcing game seven. At this point, if Steph blows a 3-1 lead, the jokes are gonna write themselves. And so far it's looking that way because on his home court, he once again gets showed up by LeBron. Stop, bro, it's a 40 point, it's a 40 point game. I don't understand. LeBron with the pull up at the elbow, he drains it and the lead is now bro he did he did bro i have not seen him do this animation in like seven two k's and unfortunately that sums up the tragic story of steph curry for him to be overshadowed this much by lebron look he's guarding lebron that's the most easy bucket i've ever seen in my life oh my god bro lebron's freaking out and why wouldn't he considering he just came back down 3-1 but he can't celebrate for too long because in the conference finals he's up against anthony edwards and the clippers who would push him to the limit and force another game seven but unfortunately the rules have been flipped and this time the thunder are the ones in desperation mode and the thunder are in trouble bro because they're down four minute left lebron with the ball i'm assuming he's taking every shot down i lied he passed it over to chet for one stop away scoot henderson with the ball scoot scoot with the no way i was about to say bro that's a wild shot to take lebron with the ball lebron had a man wide open and... 
Huh? Huh? Bro, what kind of shot is that? Yo, somebody check on Chet, bro. Chet, like, he's playing with a concussion or something. Josh Harper, three. He's draining that. He missed it. Yo, okay, see, down two. 20 seconds left. Who is this guy? Pass it to LeBron. Stare at the ball. Do the thing where you stare at the ball. The pick and roll. The fade. He misses it. Chet with the board. Oh, my God. The redemption. Bro, he literally went from taking the dumbest shot I've ever seen to literally saving the game. Maybe even saving the series. Six seconds left for the Clippers, bro. And then he fouls! Are you good? Oh my god, bro. He goes from dumb to smart. Did he miss the free throw? I wasn't looking. Oh my god, bro. Both teams want to lose. Is that even possible? Thunder don't even have a timeout, bro. LeBron, if LeBron hits a full court shot here, I'm going to freak out. Oh my god, bro. And that's how our season ends. Just like that, LeBron's lost all his momentum. He was extremely close to championship number four. But the same couldn't be said for Steph, as finally he would show up in the playoffs, defeating everyone in his way to make it to the finals after 12 long years. But the Pistons team he's up against now has LaMelo Ball, who may have been extra motivated playing his hometown team. Forcing yet another game seven which didn't bode well for stuff i i don't understand he's literally about to lose in the finals he finally it took him so long look he's blocked the simulation has not been kind to him to say the least the mellow ball wide open pulls up makes the shot steph has shockingly fallen short once again and it seems like this one might have been the final straw because when we fast forward to the 2038 season both he and lebron have entered their 30s but it would be lebron winning yet another mvp lebron now has 10 mvp awards and at this this point lebron might officially be separating himself because yet again he would be defeating steph in the playoffs i mean bro like it's actually kind of getting ridiculous now lebron will be heading to philly for his fifth finals appearance but since we're so far into the future the only notable player they have is evan mobley who to his credit is a 98 overall but lebron ultimately is a 99 and he would take full control sweeping the series and capturing his fourth championship officially crowning him the better player with that being said let's show steph some love because of course we all know one day he's breaking the three-point record Here's Curry for the record. It's good! And because he actually scores more than LeBron, one day he'll be the one to break the scoring record. He ends a shot in history. But at the end of the day, LeBron won, and it wasn't even close but I have one complaint. Because NBA history was changed so much, we missed out on some key rivalries. I'm talking about players like John Morant, who we all know has had some battles against both LeBron and Steph. But what if we threw him into a different kind of challenge? And yes, he's not on Memphis. Would he be able to outshine the two stars we just watched? To find out the answer to that question, click the video on the screen.